Hello, this is Paul Shearer with InformedCIO.com. So far in our video series, we've applied the latest planner ESU to our deployment server, and we also upgraded it to the latest tools release. Today, we're going to do something really cool, and that's install Server Manager. Uh, once again, all of this is to get to our final goal, our final end state, which is going to be to upgrade our enterprise server from SQL 2000 to SQL 2005. Next step in the process, Server Manager. So I've already downloaded the product, I've got it on my file server here, and we're going to go ahead and launch the setup executable. very speedy product. It's built on a Java engine. So it just screams. We're going to choose an admin password. Now this password is going to be separate from anything we previously configured in JD Edwards up to this point. So don't forget it or you're going to go back and have to do a reinstall. Alright, by default it's going to want to talk on port 8999, so we're going to leave it. And we'll tell it to install. Finally, it's doing something. All right, now for the fun part. We're going to configure Server Manager. Remembering the password we just created. <laughs> what was the password? I think that's it. And we're good. Introduction screen, we're just going to say next. Yes, we love the ports you've chosen for us. Good choice. Okay, next information, we're going to be configuring our system data source. Uh, to do this, you basically look at an INI file off of like a, a workstation. Wish I had a workstation handy, but I don't. So we're going to do this from memory, Let's see if we get it right system dash 8.11 database type is SQL uh, database server name is labent10 default port is 1433 physical database is JDE811 oh shoot PS811 these naming conventions kill me and SY 8.11 ah, there we go SY 8.11 is our object owner we're not going to worry about large objects but we are Unicode we'll find out in just a couple minutes if all this information was correct hit next to continue okay and the next thing it's going to do is basically ask us which version of JDBC that we want to run uh, we have the choice between our SQL 2000 version of JDBC or our SQL 2005. Uh, I'm going to go down and choose our SQL 2005 version. By the way, because of the way this field truncates, you really can't tell the difference until uh, you just select that, hit apply, and you'll see we went from... We didn't. Hold on. Let's try that again. We should have went to just one field. There we go. And now we need to find our jdbc.jar file and upload it. We're now going to browse there. We are now going to browse for our SQL jdbc.jar file. And I have it right now sitting on the root of the C drive. So we're going to go out there, grab that guy, and upload it.
And now at this point, in order to load that driver, it's going to have to restart the management console. So we're going to hit this button, log back in. Should have remembered my password. And we're in. It has detected the appropriate JDBC driver. So we're going to say next. Now we're going to give it a database username and a password. Our standard PSFT, PSFT. Now, anyone watching this, I really hope on your install your database password is not PSFT. If it is, change it now. There's no excuse for it. Everybody knows it. Huge security hole. It's only a matter of time until your auditors are going to find it. So change it before they do. Okay, now at this point it's going to come back and it's going to give us this table spec mismatch error for the F0092. This is actually good. This is cool. This means it went out there, it successfully made a connection to the database, but it's got issues. Uh, this is a known problem that is going to be addressed in a SAR shortly. And uh, Oracle's recommendation is that we just move on past it, which we're going to do. And we're going to say finish. All right, we now successfully have Server Manager installed on our uh, deployment server. Okay, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to upload software to this so that we can go and install this software to uh, our uh, Jazz server, which is running WebSphere, and our application server over on the lab ENT10. So in order to do that, we're going to go to Manage Software. We're going to browse for where we want to upload the, uh, the software to. Actually, I am going to either need to, I'm going to cancel out of this for a second, and map a drive over to my file server. Actually, Tools, Map Drive, Lab 2 backslash I dollar sign, no, um, D dollar sign backslash Oracle. Good, it's successfully mapped. Okay, we're going to say browse. We're going to choose our Y drive. We are going to go to our tools upgrade. And we're right here going to, this PAR file is for um, the HTML client to upgrade it to 897.1.1. So we're going to go ahead and tell it to upload. I'll now fast forward through the uploading portion and as soon as it's done begin uploading the software for the enterprise server. One important thing to note is that we're using the SQL 2005 JDBC driver even though our installation is still running SQL Server 2000. The reason for this is the SQL 2005 JDBC driver is backwards compatible to SQL 2000 and there's some significant performance enhancements that have been made in it. So the recommendation is even if you're on the older version of SQL, go ahead and use that new SQL Server JDBC driver. We are now done with our installation of uh, Server Manager. As you can see down in um, uh, installed software, we have installed the HTTP server, we've installed the enterprise server. In our next video, we're going to look at installing the agents onto our enterprise server and then using it to upgrade the enterprise server to 8.97.1.1. This has been Paul Shearer with InformedCIO.com, wishing you a great day. Goodbye.